In the Old Testament, Galatians tells us that the gospel came to Abraham, Galatians 3, 8. In Galatians 3, 8, it states, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. He heard the scriptures preach the gospel to him. They weren't scriptures back then. What happened? There was a person called the word of the Lord who appeared to Abraham in a vision and elaborated on his promises concerning his inheritance. Genesis 15, 1 states, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Stephen in Acts said that the God of glory had appeared to Abraham. The God of glory appearing to him, revealing himself to him, and then unfolding his promise concerning the inheritance to him was the word which came to Abraham, which was also the gospel. You might not realize that when the gospel came to you, it was the God of glory coming and shining upon you, just as he did with Abraham, but with a much fuller realization and result. Because in our time, he seals us with himself and stays with us. This is the gospel. The words on the one hand are words that we believe, but then behind it is the word, which is Christ himself. That's why when we believe, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, because as he shines on us, he's appearing to us in that gospel. One day, Jesus went from being just a myth to me to becoming three dimensional and so real. And I had to believe. What was the difference? Well, now he was shining on me as the word. The God of glory had appeared to me and now he imparted himself into me to abide with me forever. He really is my inheritance and that put me in Christ, which is the realm of my inheritance. And he began to reveal the father to me and show me all of the riches of what he had accomplished and secured for me as what is presently mine. This is my inheritance, which is reserved in heaven. I get a foretaste of it here, but eventually I'll be brought fully into it through his salvation. I'm guarded by the power of God unto that day. Colossians chapter one, verse five states, Whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, verse six, which is come unto you as it is in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you since the day ye heard it and knew the grace of God in truth. The gospel has come to you as it is in all the world and brings forth fruit. This is the same thing that Paul was talking about in Galatians 3, 2, where he says, Received ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? We hear the gospel and it brings the spirit and the spirit produces fruit. Many testify that when the gospel came and they were saved, they were immediately ushered into a new life full of fruit. There was a washing, a regeneration, and a renewing of the Holy Spirit. They had a love and a desire to preach the gospel and found that many sinful things seemed to just fall off of them. However, later they fell back into religion and they lost it all, quote unquote, spending the next several years or even decades wondering what happened and groping in the darkness for what they had, quote unquote, lost. The way to come back to it is to come back to the gospel. 
The gospel is the description of what you have in Christ based on what he has accomplished and your faith in it gives the word room to bear fruit in your life. It is the gospel that bears the fruit, not you per se, but the life in you. So the gospel brings forth fruit in you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God and truth. When you know the grace of God, it truly changes everything. We kind of intuitively know it at the beginning of our Christian life, but later we have more experiential knowledge because we experience some time in legalism. Then God has a contrast that he can use as a backdrop to teach us about the grace of God. Against this backdrop, the grace of God can eventually be shown to us and we can see what it is and what it is not. And then we become very clear about it. Then we enter into a whole new season of fruit bearing that's much more substantial because we really know that grace.